Hey, beautiful people. This is Natalie Bell, Peg City Lovely, here in Winnipeg, and I am super excited to be talking with a beautiful Canadian singer-songwriter who's about to drop an album very soon, next week to be exact. And this is someone that you need to get to know. Some of you already know her, but you need to get to know her. And her name is Christina Martin. So I'm, I don't consider myself a songwriter. I've never really written songs. My sister has written songs. Um, but I've definitely been singing for a long time, since I was three. And so I really have a good um, or a deep appreciation, I would say, for music and lyrics. And so... I'm really excited to talk to you about your album because there's a few songs that really speak to me and I can't wait to ask you about kind of the backstory of these songs. And um, I guess before we start, like it, 2002 was your first release. So that's what, almost 13 years ago. How does that feel that you're now on your fifth album? I feel old. Uh, <laughs> no, um, you know what? It actually, it, it sort of feels like with, with this album, especially that um, I almost feel like I'm starting over again. Like it's, or, or, you know, that it's bringing me a little closer to back, uh, to back than when I did get started, you know, cause I was so nervous and I was trying new things. And um, I, I don't think I really nailed the, the songwriting I really knew had, you know, I didn't really have clear vision or um, goals or any idea of what I was doing or getting involved in uh, when it came to the music business. Um, you know, now I do have a lot more experience, but yeah, there is this sort of sense sort of um, starting over because I've, I've just, this has been a year of a lot more challenges uh, across every level um, in my songwriting and in the studio and on stage, um, for my business, the business side of things, financially, you know, everything. I just, I just wanted to really, um, to really try. <laughs> to try. <laughs> Not like I wasn't trying before, but, um, I tried all this stuff and, you know, you're trying to find yourself in where you fit and you want to make a difference. You want to have an impact. You want to find meaning in your work and, you know, I'm still doing all of those things, so it doesn't really feel like um, well, I'm certainly not bored. Well, you're definitely trying really well because it's working, obviously. Obviously. Thank you. So, fifth album, and then, you know, it's something that I saw that was everyone kept saying that you have a new look. And to me, I see that your hair is a different color. <laughs> Is that what they mean? Well, it, it, I don't know. I mean, it's I think, um, uh, you know, my hair color now is the same color it was when I, in 2002, I, I just went back to blonde, um, which is my natural <laughs> color, Natalie. <laughs> um, and, you know, I mean, I, over the last couple of years, I've, um, I've, sort of allowed myself to have more fun with um, uh, fashion and, and those kinds of things. Well, this is the reason why I'm still making music and and, uh, and I'm on the road and that I'm healthy. There he is. Hi. <laughs> All right. Natalie, she's cool. Hi. So back to fashion. No, um. Yeah, actually back to fashion because I don't know people because you'll be able to see this video that we're both rocking the hoodies this evening. So, okay, let's talk about genres. When I think of genres and I think of when I first, you know, started to listen to your music, I definitely don't get that whole alt country vibe. I don't get that. I get pop rock. When did you start <laughs> listening to my music? Well, I, I went through your whole anthology, of course. <laughs> I did. I heard pop rock. Like, I I don't, I didn't, you know, and I, not to say I'm not a country music lover, because I'm a lover of all genres. I'll listen to opera. I'll listen to heavy metal. I'll listen to whatever, as long as it connects to me, right? But at the same token, you know, I was also looking, you know, I'm doing my research on you, trying to figure out who you are. And um, a lot of things came up, this whole alt country. And I was like, 
I don't get it. I don't get that. You, is that something that you thought of in the beginning or in the early years or is it? Um, it, it, well, there was a time of like when I made my first album and Wilco was, uh, mm. and Wilco was and still is, um, you know, quite a, they were quite big and they had that name attached to them for genre. They had right. that alt country. But to me, I mean, I don't, I never, I didn't really hear country, but I do understand like, when we're talking about all country, alternative country, because their songwriting, like I think a lot of the influences of Jeff Tweedy are, um, you know, come from older, you know, country music, like good, good country music, uh, right. or um, Americana like uh, writers. I mean, I'm not, I don't know personally what his influences are, but like I know when I was in Austin, a lot of there's the, the word Americana. In all country, were were often used um, for the kind of songwriting, and uh, you know if there were a lot of acoustic uh, guitar behind tracks, or if there were any banjo pedal steel. Once you put pedal steel into something, oftentimes it gets that that twanginess. Um, yeah, yeah, and and I mean, I did. I certainly have been influenced by Americana and you know Towns Van Zant and um, uh, Steve Earle, um, you know, Little Emmy Lou Harris here and there. But I was predominantly influenced by uh, 80s pop music, classic rock, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. You know, the things like Tina Turner, Ike and Tina. Yeah. And all the way up until Tina was done recording. I mean, these um, uh, Roy Orbison, Annie Lennox, Eurythmics. Jeez. Uh, uh, I mean, there, there, were, there was just a whole slew. It didn't matter to me who they were. Um, it was about their music and their songs and and uh, if they they just got me, you know. Yes. Annie Lennox was a big one, um, and of course I said earlier Tom Petty songwriting, and then that that band, the Heartbreakers, you know, uh, um, seeing them live, but also just following their you know music videos. I was very much um, you know very taken by the world of music videos and and the place. It was just interesting when you watch them, how it made you feel, and the places they took you to, you know like sort of an escapism and so I, I'm but I I was influenced by all that growing up but I I wasn't you know uh thinking I was going to become a songwriter or a entertainer at that time and it was I only started writing my own songs when I was living in Austin Texas so there being heavily influenced by the storytelling right um the Americana you know um and country artists um but you know me in the back of me, my, my roots were in, you know, pop, classic rock. Um, you know, my dad had an extensive vinyl collection. I love Motown. I love, um, dance music. I used to go to, I used to be a raver and I loved house music. So, I mean, there's just like a, a whole mesh of, um, but yeah, I think, um, and then I, when I moved to, uh, back to Halifax and I was working with Dale Murray and he brought a lot of his influences, um, sort of like jangle pop is another Ooh. genre that I feel like fit me more than alt country or even Americana. Um, although Americana is good. I, I worked for a while because it is a mesh of like country rock, um, uh, you know, alt country, uh, just, it's just like, you know, if you got acoustic guitars and, and yes. pedal steel in there anyway, but, uh, this album, we, we don't really, we have, I mean, we have very little acoustic guitar. We have very little uh, pedal steel. We don't have any pedal steel. <laughs> I didn't hear any. You know, we have one lap steel part that sounds more like a, an electric guitar part. And and uh, and I I always even from the beginning in 2002 I really wanted my first album to go in the direction of this one song called called, called Always um, Rain, which was more rhythmic and dark and guitar driven and um, it was just, but you know, I didn't know what to ask for and, you know, it ended up sounding good to me in the end anyway, but it had a lot more of the sort of folky kind of vibe to it. Um, and, uh, now I'm rambling. I <laughs> know you're not. I love hearing the story. That's the point of an interview is to hear the story. I find a lot of times in interviews, people get cut off because of the interest of time, but for me, I'm hearing and getting to know you through how you're speaking and how you're passionate about your music. And so that's what matters to me. You talk about 
you know, you're the ghosts of your musical heroes, essentially. So you talk about Tom Petty and Anna, Annie Lennox and that woman can still sing at her age. And mm-hmm. it's like you're you're hearing her 20 years ago. It's that's the kind of music I love. That's the kind of singer that I would want to be. And that's the kind of singer I think you are, too. Um, and when I when I think of when I think of you and I hear um, I hear your voice, I hear full body. I hear power. I hear a little bit of raspiness. So I, I get when I think of, you know, Canadian influences, I hear like, you know, Sass Jordan-ish kind of Alana Miles, uh, you know, Chantel, all rubbed into one, but is totally, I don't know, it, there's, this, there's just a sweetness to your power. Does that make sense? Well, it sounds good. <laughs> It's hard for me to put into words because when I'm listening, like, okay, so Puppet Museum is the the big song for me. That, I I don't know, I don't know what it is, but that song speaks to me. I'm just going to plug in here. Hold on. There we go. Um, That song speaks to me. It's, when I first heard it, I know it's, it's, it's interesting because when I first heard it, I'm like, Okay, is this about a relationship? What is what is what are what are we getting at here? And then I'm like, I'm listening more, and then I look at the lyrics, and I'm like, wait a second, I don't think this is about a person. <laughs> what do you think it's about? A city. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sort of a love song for the city of uh, Amsterdam. In Netherlands, yeah. So when I first heard it, I was like, but I was like, yes, I connect to this. I felt, you know, you know, there was like, well, there's a relationship here that, that this, this something that happened with me and I feel it, you know, it was one of those kind of things. So I just thought I'd, well, I'd share that. I think, I think in, it's such an interesting, interesting that you picked up on that. You know, I'm just starting to now, it's the first time that somebody has commented on really that song because this the album no one's heard it really i mean it's coming out now and so it's interesting for me to hear you you want your songs to go out and then you want people to hear them and to come up with their own you know ideas but 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 i'm realizing talking to you that when i wrote that song i mean i was trying to find you know the words to express how i felt about this place and the only way i knew how to do that was by comparing it to relationships yes in, you know obviously in my in my past and and you know there's also a little bit of of, of dreaming going on um and visualizing when when you're songwriting um you you know you're i mean it i think it, uh, it, that song um uh it, it came quite quickly when i wrote it but i i tweaked it um you know, I, I wanted to be very, very um, careful not to for it not to be too long, like for it to have that imagery, um, for it to someone to listen to it and and maybe think it's about a person because uh, that's kind of what it does sound like. It's yeah. Like, but but um, and that is how I mean that's how we relate to a lot of things and it, it, it's all relationships anyway. So whether you're talking about your dog or your a city or um, you know, giving life to a paperclip. I don't know if anybody's ever actually written a song about a paperclip in such an emotional, emotional. I'm sure they have. Way, but, um, that's my next album. Uh, <laughs> giving life to paperclips. and uh, stationary uh, themed album. I think you could go off on it. Right? You spent a lot of time at my desk, which is uh, a whole other topic that I want to bring. Um, but yeah. But that that definitely that that song was that like when I listened to it I was that's my song that's my song just so you know and um, the title track it'll be all right that I think that's self explanatory but also reaching out reaching out really connected to me because I've experienced loss in my life recently my mom passed away from cancer a year ago. Yeah. And so reaching out is the other song that really, you know, you feel kind of helpless and you want to do things and you can't and you don't know what to do and you don't know how to help. And 
It, it, yeah, I, I'm not going to get all sad now. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I know, I know where you were coming from with that song, too. So oh, thank you. So there's power in sadness. And, I, and you know, we're like in writing that song and, and other songs, too, on the album, like, I think it's sort of about learning how to, that it's okay to be sad in a song. And, I mean, that song kind of sounds upbeat. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of it. We wanted, we wanted that. I mean, I wanted that. It, it, I wanted to be able to get up on stage and really uh, move around and, you know, be able to express to myself in these really, these tough topics, but that it not be in such a, a heavy, um, I wanted it to be, uh, it's kind of weird to say, but uplifting and liberating. Yes. Uh, and yeah. about moving forward and learning and, and uh, light instead of just, Sort of. I mean, I've done lots of shows where it's just heavy song after yeah. another, and no rhythm section to move me behind me, and 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 it's hard. It, it's hard to do that night after night. And I wanted. That's where I wanted a change as well in my live performance. I wanted to. Um, you know, I wanted to be happy and make people happy, and and I think for people who want to take the time to listen. It, and, or, or connect to it and it has a deeper meaning and spend more time with the songs yeah um, then that's great they, that people can do that um, but uh, you know that, they develop that relationship in time with, with with an album or with a song but yeah um, and now I'm going off I'm rambling again <laughs> no no I'm, no I'm sorry to hear about your mother you know it's like these like lost and exit events they're the most pivotal events in oh. our lives and Totally. It's just tough. It's just tough. I, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I even that. even driving home today, I just, you know, I'm flashbacking to the hospital. I'm flashbacking to, you know, when I was 10. I'm, you know, it's just, it, it will forever be with me, right? But again, I thank God that I have music. I have music, yeah. right? That's my connection. And that's, that's why I said when I, you know, a lot of times people around me, friends or whatever, they're like, oh, I love this beat. I love this beat or I love this whatever. I listen to lyrics. Lyrics connect yeah. to my soul. That's the piece for me. So I appreciate your songwriting for sure. Thank you. Sometimes you're, you know, you have a nice voice. That's that's great, too. Uh, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> but um, but obviously, I, I mean, I'm very lyric driven as well. And I've I've never I uh, gravitate towards uh, you know, music that has uh, that element to it as well. Yeah. So that's thank you for listening. Yeah, of course. I, well, I have one another song, another one of your tracks, "Things You Can't Tell by Looking Her Way." That one. Oh, this one spoke to me as a parent. Like I, I felt that was like a parenting song for me. Is that weird? It's not weird because they wrote it for my mother. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you're, you're dead on. Well, this is, um, I'm getting really excited because it, you know, I mean, I wanted to write an album that would connect with more, with people, like that, that it, there would be these clear messages and it, it's, I don't know, maybe no one else will get it, but it <laughs> sounds like you're getting it. I got it. <laughs> uh, you win. I win. I really appreciate hearing these this feedback, you know, um, and, and that that uh, I've never I'd never written a song for for my mother, and and my mother and I have I mean she's like she's like my rock, and we have a we have a complicated relationship, you know, like but but there's just no doubt, you know, I, that in my mind like the the appreciation I have for what she did, and what she did for us yes. growing up, and. Um, the kind of woman she is, and her just she's always been there, one hundred percent for me. She's coming this week to these two shows, you know. She's, awesome. She just she's just amazing. I can't stand her, but she's amazing. <laughs> and I love her. To That's so funny. I had the same relationship with my mom. I had the same relationship. It's just how it is. I think that's daughters and their mothers. That's I know that's how it is with my two girls right now. So it's all good. It's all good. So okay, so let's um let's switch topics to hmm. So okay, charities, fundraisers, those kind of things. I noticed also that's something that you've been a part of. How how do you 
how does that come to to be? How is that something that you decide to do and who you decide to do it for? Well, I think it just becomes, um, if it's already, it was already a part of my upbringing that, you know, my, my, my mother was very involved in volunteering. And when I was uh, in high school, you know, it, and certainly my, uh, I was uh, played on a lot of sports teams and, and we were always, um, uh, you know, really encouraged and taught that that was important to help each other and work together and help the community and, and so, so, but you know, the, the first time I really had the, an opportunity to, to volunteer, um, sort of a little, get more a little involved with a specific organization was the Canadian Mental Health Association in Halifax, and I just went to a, um, a what do you call them, like a, a conference where all mm-hmm. the volunteer or the organ, uh, non not for profit organizations and charities come, and you can go around and uh, meet them and look into them. And I met a woman named Margaret Murray who works on the Building Bridges program for the Canadian Mental Health Association in Halifax. And, um, I, it, you know, I was studying psychology at the time, and I was just sort of becoming more aware of, um, you know, mental health issues in my own family, um, trying to become more aware of my own struggles at the time. And, um, and... I loved the idea of her program because it just made so much sense that you have people who felt maybe isolated or um, there was, you know, there's uh, still and even more so, um, you know, five, ten years ago, uh, this huge stigma surrounding mental health, uh, mental illness. And mm-hmm. uh, the, the program is very simple. You, you pair a volunteer with someone in the community who would like to uh, get out in the community. And, you know, you basically, you have a new friend and you hang out whenever you can. And um, that, it was that simple. And, and I saw how that made such a difference in our community. And um, so I just got more involved with them at the time. And, uh, you know, uh, anything I could do. Um, and a lot of the times it was with music. We would, uh, I would host shows, um, put on events. Um, and... There were times when I didn't, I wasn't able to do that, and I had to take a break. Um, you know, uh, uh, maybe I was going through my own stu- uh, yeah. struggles, or I went through a divorce in my twenties, uh, and ooh, ditto. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, if you haven't, well, it's, it's the cool thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so I always kept a link with the CMHA because I felt that uh, the work they were doing and it's just extremely important. And along the way, as a musician, you get asked to do a lot of things. Yeah. And I, I basically try to say yes to everything if I can. And, you know, uh, people are pretty understanding if you can't or if you're busy or you just can't make it to town. Um, um, I just, I wish I could do more. A couple of years ago, um, I was, uh, just sort of fell into this great opportunity opportunity to learn about uh, dementia mm. um, I met a doctor named Kenneth Rockwood and and I was uh, invited to do an artist residency where I was given the opportunity to learn about dementia and so and and, and uh, I spent time in, in dr. Rockwood's clinic um, basically just observing and then my job was to write some songs and so it was just interesting I was given an opportunity to learn about something and and meet new people and you know, uh, it was uh, it was great. I mean, I never would have thought that that was something. You know, I'm beyond you know, young and healthy, and I think it's now I just see that young young healthy people. Uh, you know, all the more reason while you're young and healthy to become more aware of what's going on um, with our aging population. Yeah, um, and we have to build community. You know, communities that are all inclusive and just aware of all of these. You know, mental illness to um, you know cancer. How do we support people who have physical and mental and uh, you know all kinds of different conditions? Um, and you know, it's it certainly uh, seems like a daunting task. But uh, yeah. I just I just think that it's something we all kind of need to keep our eye on. Sometimes you just land in something and you can you, you can work on it as long as you can and then sometimes you, you want to try something, you want to help in an, another area. You know, I think I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're awesome. 
<laughs> best, <laughs> best interview ever. Let's talk about hubby. We met him already. Let's talk about hubby. What is it yeah. like to work beside the love of your life? Like, how does how is it? How does that work? I think it works well for us. I'm not saying it's perfect all the time, but I'm very grateful that I met um, that I met Dale when I did. I mean, I could say I wish I'd have met him 20 years ago, but like I think we both agreed that we wouldn't have been ready for each other and I had to go through my stuff and he had to go through his stuff and yeah um you know um it just means a lot to me that he's just supportive of everything like I have these wild ideas the music business industry isn't exactly an easy industry and and uh and you need support you can't do it alone and he's just he said he's just been there 100 percent for me and, uh, you know, I mean, we, we, every year we get better at working together in the studio, like, um, uh, making music together and building the show together. And it's just, it, it's great. I mean, we're lucky we get to be on the road together. I think it's really difficult for musicians who have to tour and be away from their partners. And yeah. I don't know if I would be strong enough to do that, uh, yeah, we like to be together. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I'll tell you right now, my fiance is tone deaf, so we won't ever be singing together. But <laughs> but we make a great team. We make a great team. You do? Do you like yes. to cook together? Oh, we cook together. We dance together. We do lots oh, of things together. So it's the singing thing is just never going to happen. I'm just telling you that from now. Just telling you. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, you know, I need it's about all those other things, though. Like, Dale yes. and I, sing, we do sing together, but, like, let's face it, Dale, you're a backup singer. <laughs> <laughs> let's get real. Let's get real. He's actually really talented on his own. Um, I just keep him uh, I just keep him as my backup. No. But, uh, <laughs> it's all those other things we love to do. We run together. Sometimes we do yoga together. We cook together. We love watching movies together. I really, my favorite part of the day is at the end of the day, or we get to snoogle, as we call yeah. our snoogle time. And it's and we just kind of have that moment where, you know, everything, it's not busy. And yeah. We can kind of just, like, you just go, get, hey, can you believe it? Look what we're doing. It's great. Yeah. And you just get to be. You just get to be. That's it. Yeah. It's yeah. It's awesome. He, I feel like he's the first person who's really just taken all of me and, and, uh, and he's allowed me to like heal in a lot of ways over the years. It's pretty remarkable, actually, that he's he's just been that the, the biggest healing factor. So okay, you guys, lovey doveys. All right, yeah. two. You have two dates coming up at the end of this week, right? For your two shows in yeah, uh, yeah. and then you're off to Europe. So Europe, you have one heck of a following as well. And that's where primarily most of your live shows will be, your tour will be. So what, what's, what's the difference between a Canadian audience and a European audience? Well, sometimes not much, um, other than they, have, uh, they certainly have a population uh, over there to, um, you know, to sustain a, to the growth of the career. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, uh, it's a little bit easier to grow... Um, in less uh, less of a period of time in, in Europe, um, in Canada, it's just it's just harder because your cities are so far apart, yeah. and um, there's so many great musicians out there trying to do it. And um, but I mean, Canadian audience, audiences are wonderful. We love playing um, uh, in Canada for sure, and we'll continue to do so and and build over the years. Um, it's just happened a little quicker over there, and uh, uh, the market over. Uh, the market over there, people um, still like to buy physical CDs yes. and uh, merchandise. In Germany, in particular, so Germany's been a, a great spot for us. And we've asked last year, we were invited as to be artists and residents in the city of Dachau. So we lived there for six months. Wow. This year, we were invited back for three months, which is why we're able to be there and really uh, build momentum and and. And keep things going, and they've invited my band this year, which is great because we want to be playing more with the band. Yeah, and uh, yeah, 
So, yeah, you want us to as well, Natalie, I can tell. <laughs> I do, and you need to come to Winnipeg. I'm not telling you again. You need to come to Winnipeg. Okay, all right. You call it's Tom. going to happen. Tom. It's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> I want it to happen. I, I, yeah, I love, love going to Winnipeg. Um, it's amazing. And, you know my friend Matt Epp? I'm, I'm good. I'm, yeah, I know that name. I know that name. He's a great Canadian singer songwriter. Yeah, favorite Canadian artist. Um, so you know, just, just saying, you know. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Christina, Christina said, uh, "What's up?" I talked to you years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be traveling. You're going to obviously give a great show to the local folks. So what? What's your um? You know, for for those of us that that have never been to Halifax, I, I need to ask this because I've never been. Farthest I've ever gone is, I guess, Ottawa. Wait. Yeah, yeah Ottawa, Toronto. Yeah. So I've never gone to the East Coast. So tell me, what is the one thing I need to do when I come there? Because you know I'm going to come there. So what is the one thing I need to do? Um, well, you need to come to my place and then we'll have lobster dinner. <gasps> yes! Okay, keep going. Uh, <laughs> That's, I mean, then it's good. Then we take you to the beach, and it's pretty. I mean, there's a lot of little things I can think of. You kind of, I mean, I know it sounds kitschy, but you got to do the Alexander Keys tour at the brewery Ooh, in Halifax. Yeah. That's pretty cool because they take you back in time. And, um, you know, you got to go to the Carlton in Halifax and uh, watch a show and, and have some drinks. Uh, got great restaurants in Halifax. And doing the, uh, I think, I believe it's called the Lighthouse route route oh yeah uh, Nova scotia it's it's uh going down to lunenburg and and liverpool and and just stopping off at all those um, fishing towns is great and, and enjoying the local food um and you could see you know live music i think in all in, in almost every city i'm making that up i don't know that for a fact anyway when you come to my place on your way to well just make music at your house <laughs> Halifax. Uh, we have lots of lots of room, and uh, we'll have lobster dinner. It's on. You know that. Okay, so lobster dinner, your house. It's happening. I'll wait. I'll I'll wait till you get back from Europe. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it makes it funny because lobster is kind of expensive. <laughs> Let's get tanks. I'm, we might have to be cheese and crackers. <laughs> I'll do some sort of crowdfunding campaign. Don't worry. We'll make it happen. <laughs> um, and this album will not tank because folks can order it right now on iTunes. You can pre-order it right now. It'll be all right, people. It'll be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And so I also noticed something about CBC Radio 2. What's going on there? Something about voting. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, as of last week, uh, uh It'll be all right. Uh, was entered on the online uh, voting chart to get the song onto the top twenty countdown. Ah, okay. CBC Radio Two. So if uh, and so basically, if I get enough votes and sales, pre-orders, that song uh, will then make its way to that chart, and mm -hmm. then we keep the voting going, we keep the sales going, and. It could stay on there for a long time. I had a song on there for five months, and and it was so great. Um, the fans kept it going. Yes. Yeah. It w I mean, it wasn't me, and it wasn't uh, my mother and a few of uh, <laughs> her friends. And um, But it makes such a difference um, because so many more people get to hear the song. And right. Of course, there's no, you know, from our perspective, that's your goal is to get your music out to as many people and and, uh, you know, hopefully it makes a few people smile. That's right. Um, so you can vote uh, online, CBC Radio 2 Top 20 Countdown um, Weekly. And then we'll see. We'll see if it gets on there this Friday or maybe next week. Who knows? And I will make sure that I add it to the blog post so the link will be there. And everyone will see it and your Twitter handle and your website and everything will be there. Don't worry. I can't thank you enough. <laughs> great. Yeah, it's awesome. Good. This should have happened a long time ago, but that's okay. We're starting now. <laughs> I know. It's true. I feel like, you know, new beginnings. Well, you know what? For all the people that 
I didn't get to meet or haven't heard my music, I'm sort of a little relieved that they can just kind of start now. Yeah, start I'm excited. Now, <laughs> and I got to talk to you. <laughs> Which, yeah, this has been really great. I'm excited I got to talk to you. Now. Awesome. So let's wrap up with one fun fact about Christina Martin. Oh, my goodness. I have, <laughs> I have an addictive personality. And right now, the thing I'm struggling with, and I don't mean to make light of addictions, but I'm like dead serious when I have, a, I have an addiction to Lay's salt and vinegar <laughs> chips. And I'm trying to get into the, you know, my show outfit, which is really tight. And I just can't, all I can think of. Or Lay's. Is, is just, just shoving. I can't stop. Like, I'm surprised I even took time to do this interview. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't see you eating them right now. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. I'm, I'm going to the store after this. And I'm, it's going to be hard not to get, not to get salad, but I think I'm going to get salad and some chips. <laughs> hey, adds texture. Whatever you got to do. Oh, salt and vinegar. <laughs> anyway, that's, I don't know if that was fun for you. It's torture for me. It's awesome. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. That was awesome. Made my day. <laughs> well, I'm going to say thank you because I'm very grateful to have been able to speak with you on uh, the eve or the week's eve of your release. But uh, as people can listen in here, pre-order on iTunes right now. You want to do that. I've already named some of the songs, but those are mine, so you can't have those. Um, <laughs> but please go and listen and support. Support Canadian artists. This is this is a proud moment for me as a born-in-Canada woman to be hearing uh, and speaking with Christina today. So thank you so much. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you so much. Yeah. Awesome. All right. That's it. We're done. <laughs> shake, shake. Woohoo!